Hi, welcome to In a Pickle Knitting. My name is Donna. Today is Thursday, October 31st, 2019. We're celebrating Halloween in the U.S. And um, did I say episode 39? I don't remember. It's episode 39. I will be having quite a few finished objects, some works in progress, some works for the future, and um, something else, our children's literature book. And I think there was, oh, uh, prize winners for our baby knit along or make along that was going on over in the Ravelry group. So I'll go ahead and get started. I'm going to be glancing down to uh, keep track of my notes. I forget things even though they're written down. So I'm going to try to remember to look down there and get everything in today. The first things that I have that are finished are some dishcloths. The last time I was here, I was working on a set, and I don't remember if, where I was. I do a set of three, and I know I had started some of them, but these are the three that I finished. There is a peach, but that's called something rose, tea rose or something like that, and this green that I would call aqua, has another name, and this variegated. So that was a set of three, and then I recently finished this set of three, and I know this one is called, um, it's a purple, but it's called Black Current. The blue one is called Blueberry, and I don't remember the name of the variegated one. So this is uh, my other three. That puts me at 43, but this is the 43rd week, uh, 44th book week of the year. Oh my goodness, I can't talk. The 44th week of the year will end on Sunday, so by Sunday I need to finish one more in order to stay caught up with my goal of one a week to use up my cotton yarn. I'm participating in the Yarn Hoarders Dishcloth Challenge of 2019, which is being run over on Instagram, as well as in her group, I think. Um, I'm not, I hadn't gone over there and done anything. I don't really want to win the prize. I just want to, um, which is more cotton yarn. I'm trying to use up my cotton yarn. That's why I don't want to win anything, but I'm trying to keep up with it so that I can reach my personal goal of using up the cotton yarn that I've purchased. So that's the first thing to show you. Let's see next. I completed uh, several things that I can't hold up and show you. They've been given away. And the, the next thing is a hat. This was a hat for charity. It, the charity is Operation Chemo Comfort. And if you look at my project page for charity hats, it will give the address of this particular cancer charity. I knit this um, most recent one out of this Juniper Moons Findlay DK yarn, and it is color Emerald, which is color 24. It is, a, as it says, a DK weight yarn, but the fiber content is extra fine merino wool and mulberry silk blend, 50-50. And I knit a hat, and I can put a picture here for you of the hat that I knit. It came from this book, 60 Quit Luxury Knits, and the name of this one is Tulip Lace Hat. So it looks like this, but this is done in the Cascade yarn. This is a Cascade yarn book. The, their yarns are used in all of the projects. I did not use, I have actually used this color yarn this very yarn before, but I used it for something else. So this time I had this yarn and this is an extra skein. It's not a quite a full skein, so I really couldn't do another hat in this color. I also have a purplish color of the same yarn and I might make some more hats. It's, it was a fun, fairly quick knit and you know very stretchy, so that's really good for when you're giving it away to someone that you don't know their head size. It's nice to make something that will stretch or contract a little bit to um, make it fit or let it be fitted. While I'm sitting here, I, I'm noticing this shawl over here. This is a shawl I knit a long time ago. I've never shown it. I'm going to put some pictures here because it's really hard to show it. It's very, very long. I don't remember the length, though I do have a project page that would tell you the length. I don't remember it. It's um, called Arabella. The pattern is by Skano, and it was knit from a kit. Well, not really a kit. It's a set of yarn like this. This is a, a one that I could do the same shawl out of. 
These are singles yarns. The, each um, of these small skeins that are braided together are uh, singles. And there's no information whatsoever on the tag other than I purchased where I purchased it and their price for it. So after making this one, I did buy another um, set because I really liked this color combination, but I've never made it. It was an easy shawl to make, primarily garter stitch, and then a little bit of you know yarn overs to make some lace to separate the colors. The pattern is confusing. It's a free pattern. It's called um, Arabella, as I said by Skano, and they had Very Pink Knits did an explanation tutorial on this very shawl, which came out after I'd made it. I can't remember exactly what it was, but there's something a little bit unclear in, like just a few words would have let you know, okay, stop that yarn and do this next thing with the next color. But I had a little extra yarn, so I kept going and just did something weird, which didn't affect the way it looked at all. But if I had continued to do that, I would have run out of yarn for it um, because I would have kept using a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more of each color as I started. So it was something to know, but she did make a clarification video. If you're interested in making something like this, I'd suggest watching it first. But still, there's something confusing, and I wish I could remember what. But it's very, very warm, and uh, my daughter took it to her old workplace where she sat underneath an air conditioning vent, and she froze. So she just had it there where she could throw it over herself to stay warm while she was um, sitting there working. And then she moved jobs and um, wasn't so cold anymore. So um, I got it back. And so that's why it's over there. So that's something that's uh, sitting out there that I always forget to do is what's the shawl. So I thought I'll say it while, I'm, while I see it. Um, next, um, if you follow me on Instagram, you will have seen the Halloween socks that I made. And I don't have those for you to see either. I have some pictures. I made a pair for my grandson, and then I decided to make my daughter and her fiance a pair as well. Um, would have been best to have planned it out in advance because I did a lot of pulling out. I had, because I used, I had one skein of yarn of the stripe. So it's this orange um, and gray stripe called Lava Stream. It was from an Etsy shop. I ordered it a, more than a year ago. As Vaults and design. I'm not gonna. I'm, I've butchered their name. I'm gonna put it across here. But it's an Etsy shop, and beautifully dyed. Very. It's not a merino wool. It's wool and not uh, 7525 wool nylon blend. Um, they came out very soft. So my daughter's socks ended up being definite shorty socks, and I, I could have done that better had I planned a little bit better than I did. On my grandson's, the small pair, he put them on and loved them. I was really surprised. They were the first pair I made and went slip sliding around on our wood floor and fell like three times. So I thought before I took them back and said, I, you know, I needed to do this. He didn't want me to do it, but I ordered this product, ABS Sock Stop. And I put the sock on a sock blocker to stretch it open with some cellophane or saran wrap or something underneath it so that I protect my sock blocker and put little dots of this so that hopefully he won't slip, fall, and hurt himself. And I thought this could be really useful for slippers or other things as well. I ordered mine on Amazon and came quickly and I think it worked pretty well. Now they have not been washed so I don't know, but that's they're made for socks, which would have to be washed, so I would presume that it would stay on pretty well. It dried overnight and ready to go. So next, let's see. Um, I had started this pair of socks with my last podcast. They were my Desert Vista Dye Works September socks. And the color is, is Kiss Me at Midnight and another skein just called Pink. So these are for me, and the only difference from any other sock I do is I did a one by one rib. I usually do a two by two rib, but just to switch things up, it was an afterthought heel. I do all my socks on a size one, US size one needle, and that made my September pair because I'm participating in the fifth annual Desert Vista Dye Works 
whatever the rest of the name of that is with use up your sock yarn. The next pair, I think I mentioned that I would be doing, or maybe I'd even, I don't know if I'd even started one, I just can't remember, but it is, this color is called Laser Tag, again, Desert Vista Dye Works, just my regular sock with an afterthought heel, two by two rib for a short cuff, and um, either a wedge or round round toe, it, it just all depends. So that's another pair of socks. And while we're on a roll with socks, my next pair, if you've watched before, you might have recalled that I sent away five skeins of my yarn to be cranked into sock tubes. And I had Freckled Whimsy do that for me. And I'm trying to put heels, cuffs, and toes into all of those so that they can be useful to me or to someone else. And I did another uh, pair where I added um, heels, cuffs, and toes. Let me stop before I say this because I did the same thing with the um, Halloween socks. I needed a contrast color for uh, cuffs and heels and toes to help stretch that yarn out. So I dyed a gray that matched the lightest gray in there. So that's if, when you see in the picture, if you see in the picture, the, the gray, that was just a skein that or some yarn that I dyed so that I could make that yarn stretch far enough to make three pairs of socks. I did the same thing when um, before making these the same day. I just dyed up this brown color to match one of the colors in this yarn. This is Craft House Magic Pumpkin Patch colorway. And she made her model sample socks with green, which you know is perfect. But I had some green, but I just thought, you know, it'd make it look maybe just even more fall-like to be brown. So I just looked to find, till I, I dyed until I mixed uh, the dye, until I found a color that blended with one of these colors. And then um, I didn't know if I would have enough to do heels, cuffs, and toes from that. So I did the heels in the same color because I had a lot of it left. I didn't have her crank the whole hundred grams of yarn. I asked for do about 75 grams of it and leave to leave me some extra so that way I could do the heels there. So I did my heels in the self color, but I did the toes and the cuffs in this brown that I dyed. I was loving while doing the heels how subtly colored this yarn is. Ellie from Craft House Magic. It is, it really is beautiful, and I think this makes a nice pair of fall socks. So that's another pair of socks, but um, even when you just do heels, cuffs, and toes, when you change yarn for all of that and do the knitting of those three parts, you're doing not half the knitting, but a fair amount of knitting and work, and you give yourself more ends to weave in. So it's still, you're putting a lot of your personal effort into making socks that have been cranked. Let me see what I have next. Um, got all the way through there. Oh, I decided that, and I wish I decided it early in October, and I wish I enjoyed doing this a little bit more because I enjoy that it's done. And that is to make some knitted knockers. I have made them before, and what it, the, the problem for me with this is that it's, it's a cotton yarn, which is great. This is a beautiful Cascade Pima cotton yarn. Knits up really nicely, and it is so soft. I can understand why this is. The Knitted Knocker organization has a list of yarns you can use that they know are going to be soft for these patients and that are going to be durable and maybe absorbent, etc. I don't know. But this is one of their yarns that they will accept the knitted knockers from but it's cotton and so it doesn't stretch and you have to do a make one right which for me is a really difficult stitch and to make it more difficult for myself the only set of dpns i have that are the right size for getting the gauge i need are carbons which have a separate tip and body and the, it catches at that tip. So I don't like knitting with that pair of needles. I don't like the yarn. I don't like to do 
make one right. I like that they're, I'm doing this. I, I think that every October I would like to get several pairs made to donate. And my local um, yarn shop, which is Yarn Cloud, they're a collection spots. So you can just take them in when you're done and drop them off and they ship them and they ask they say you don't have to stuff them because they'll that'll just save in postage and also you just send them like this. So for the breast Cancer Awareness Month, October, I think that's a, a very nice cause to knit for. And I hope next year that I will at least get two pair done and, and think, plan it a, ahead of time and plan my time out a little bit better there ahead of time. So I did finish one, one set and I'm going to be taking a class at that yarn shop, Yarn Cloud, this weekend. It's on Saturday morning. They're, they are having a brioche hat class and I really want to brioche knit. I, may, I started a cowl that was done in the round and watched several YouTube videos and it seemed to work out you know okay I get it and was moving along but as it got about that big I'm kind of looking at the beginning and it's just not you know where you're beginning of your round where it's just not looking right and I have no idea if I did something wrong or is there a trick or, you know, at, when you're knitting su such as stripes in the round, there's ways to make it jogless. So I, I gave up. I just totally gave up on it. And I thought I want, I need to take a class where also, and, I, and then I dropped a stitch where I have some help or support with errors and just to make sure that I'm doing things correctly. So I am taking that class. I'm going to be all over the place today. <laughs> the name of this hat that they're doing together is called My Favorite Weekend Hat. And there's a picture of it in two colors. And there's a picture of it in one color. And you can put a pom-pom on it. To start the class, we're supposed to have the rib done. Because, of course, you know you don't have to brioche for that part. And, in fact, this pattern is uh, brioche every other row and the decreases are done on the plain knit row. So that is gonna make it easier. But they're doing another class as a follow-up after this. It's like this is class one, and then the second class, there are actually um, more shaping that you see in the brioche, and so you'll be doing your decreases on the brioche rows. I'm gonna be using these two colors for high contrast. This is a gray, and this is kind of pinkish. This one, the, the pinkish, is Malabrigo, Malabrigo Rios, which is a worsted weight, and the color name is, I knew what it was, but I don't remember now. And is it, oh, here it is. English Rose, English Rose. My lighting is really bad today. Today's Halloween day, and it's really fall-like out today. It's um, not, not overly cold, but it's raining and dreary looking. So I don't have great light in here. This gray is a different brand of yarn. It is monochrome worsted. And I think the color was a number. Hand dyed extra fine merino. It seems like, you know, very similar kinds of yarn. And it is color 4863. Doesn't have any um, other information for our color name on there. So that's going to be for my favorite weekend hat. And I don't know what color pom pom to use. And none of the ones I have will work with it naturally. And I can't decide which color to make dominant. So it, whatever color I'm going to have dominant, I want to make the brim in that color, and I just can't decide if to go with the English rose, so I would say the pink, or the gray. I don't know. We'll have to see, but I've got to get busy on that because the class is Saturday. Today's Thursday, so I need to get that cast on. I need to get the yarn wound and get it cast on and get the rib made, the, you know, the band, whatever that's called. Let's see what else have I made. I'm so sorry I'm, my face is all over the place as I'm moving around here. Oh, I know what's next is I saw on Instagram Susan B. Anderson had a new set of patterns out. It's called Little Witch Charm Set. And there you can see the little witches with a broom. 
but also there was a cat as one of the patterns. Let me turn to the page that shows the cat. Okay. You can see hers right there. So my grandson loves cats, and I thought, well, to put in his Halloween bag, I will make the cat. So here it is. Little round body, cute little tail. I don't, black is so hard, you know. And the ears, you know, my, my fault. The pattern makes the ears perfect, but I don't. The pattern did not show a little face on it, but when I showed it to my husband, I said, oh, look what I made for my grandson, you know, for Halloween. And he's like, what is it? I said, it's a cat. He goes, oh, really? He said, well, maybe you need a face. So, okay, I put a face. I did some French knots in a green yarn for eyes, a French knot for pink, and then just did some straight stitches in a gray, a light gray there for some little whiskers. So I'm going to put that in his Halloween bag. I need to make sure I don't leave it sitting up here and forget all about it. So I made that, and I think maybe I'll make the little witches, or maybe I'll save that and do that next year. Now, last year, I made some knitted acorns from a pattern by Hunter Hammerson, and it's called Horde. Well, I gave those away, which is what I usually do with things that I make. I end up giving them away. So I decided I wanted a set. I'm going to make another set. But while I was at it, I made two sets, and I sent a set to my mother. But this is the set that I kept. And some of my caps were still connected. So when they were still connected, I knit the same color and made them about the same size. I have another set here that's... And all I used were um, scraps of yarn that I already had. This yarn is the same as the socks I just showed you, the Pumpkin Patch Colorway by Craft House Magic. I made, and that was another set of doubles, but mostly I don't remember what the yarns are. This one is a plum brown color combined, and put them in a little dish. So I sent my mother a dish, and of I sent her the, the brass dish and the acorns. Well, she said that she went out to a craft fair after she had gotten it. She went out, was at a craft fair and somebody had made a little stuffed squirrel. So she bought it and sat it next to it and said it just looked adorable. So I thought, oh, what a great idea. Never would have had the idea myself. So I went on Ravelry and just searched squirrel knitted patterns and came, it, several came up. And I clicked on one, this one called Backyard Squirrel. It's by Sarah Elizabeth Kellner Designs, but probably if you searched for it for Backyard Squirrel, you'd, you'd get it. Um, I just typed in squirrel, but the pattern doesn't say who made it any place, so I had to write it down here on the back so I would remember. But I think that looks really cute. It says to use a worsted weight yarn, and it gave some measurements for it too, but that's gonna be deep in the pattern. I'm not gonna remember right now. But I'm going to knit this and put one of my little acorns in his pause and sit him by my little acorns from the horde pattern. So that was a, a fun thing. I spent a whole weekend doing all those acorns because I made quite a few. Next, um, oh, I, um, I knit a hat and booties for a friend whose son and um, daughter-in-law are having a baby boy. I made the beloved pattern again. I love that pattern. And I did it out of hip strings yarn in the double minor base. They have a double major base, and I made the little surprise baby jacket last year out of this same color in um, the DK, which is uh, major, but minor is fingering weight. So I bought the fingering weight. I went to the Shenandoah fiber festival near the end of September and I purchased this fingering weight from them and in the same colorway which is a mix of blues and greens and I made a little pair of booties which I will show here a picture of the beloved hat and the booties and I don't know the name of the pattern of the booties I bought it a long time ago and I wrote all over in different places it doesn't have the maker's name I never I think it was before I was on Ravelry and I never made a page for that little pair of booties that I made. So, but I made another pair and um, there they are. And those have been given away. 
So the baby's due in a couple days. So I had to get that on. Let's see what else. Another little thing that I finished was a mini sock ornament. I'm going to try to get several of these made. I make them every year, but I give them away and then I end up without having any. And I said this year I was gonna have some. So I use this pattern called Mini Knit Sock. This was a free pattern on Ravelry. And I made this little, it has a, a heel flap, gusset, heel turn, Kitchener toe. And I added a little crocheted hoop to hang that. So I'm gonna try and get some more of those made um, in different Christmassy colors for the Christmas tree. Let's see, did I finish anything else? Goodness knows. Well, actually I did finish something kind of silly. My grandson has had this blinky bear that I knit for him when he was a baby. This, I did it in a class that I took at the Yarn Cloud. The pattern was written by a lady who instructed there, Petra, and it's called Blinky, and we had a knit along together where she was there to help us. But this pattern, look how many pages this pattern is. And there are links to tutorials on strategies that she uses. For instance, the Emily Ochre pinhole cast on, provisional cast on, making directional increases and decreases, working magic loop. She gives directions for all of that, uh, picking up stitches. Um, in two different ways or from two different like from the edge and from a, some pearl bumps Kitchener stitch grafting and duplicate stitch finishing she gives you complete details on all of that and something else without showing too much of the pattern is she has these little boxes so that when you're supposed to do something when you do it you can check it off and keep track very easily right on your pattern so I did this there in a class and my I did a gauge swatch as I was supposed to, and it came out right. But what happened, gauge swatches lie to me because they're fine for when I'm working in small areas, but as I start to work in bigger areas in the round, my gauge loosens up. And I need to remember that, but um, I didn't. And so when I stuffed it, he's, he's kind of too see-through for my taste. So I think I should have used smaller needles and really focused on tightening up in those the belly area because the rest of the areas are fine. And this yarn is universal. It is tapestry. So it's by Universal Yarns. It's tapestry worsted or worsted tapestry. It's an entirely acrylic yarn, and she did that on purpose so that they would be washable. This has, um, it's done all in one piece. So there's, you don't have to sew anything on. You do have to come back and stitch the face details on. Okay, so he likes this. Well, he doesn't really pay attention to it all the time, but every once in a while it's like, oh, I love you, Blinky, and carts him everywhere and all that. And then he kind of gives up on him. Well, he had him out and said, Nana, he needs a blanket. So I've dropped it, I think. Hold on. So I had some leftover yarn from a blanket that I made for him. It was this real fuzzy, very hard to see. It's a navy. But I did a different, uh, I did a moss stitch instead of a double moss stitch on this and just used what I had to make a blanket for Blinky. So then I had some other yet left over and he wanted whatever I could make out of that. So I made another smaller blanket that he's got with him. So he decides, I need a mama bear and a baby bear for this family because I only have Blinky and he's the, the papa bear. So I thought, well, same pattern they make the same yarn in a DK weight. So I bought the Universal Yarn Uptown DK, and I bought this, it's, it also does this tapestry thing, or maybe it's stripes, I don't know, we'll see. But I'm going to make him a smaller one. So this is DK, and not only am I going down needle, because, probably two sizes just because it's worsted to DK, but I'm going to go down another one so that it comes out tighter and it will be smaller. And I have not decided what I'm going to do on the baby bear. So that's something coming up. Blinky the bear. And you can get this pattern on Ravelry. It's um, knitting with Petra. 
I think that's what her Ravelry name is. P-E-T-R-A. Hopefully, oh, there goes better. Okay. Rolling right along. What else have I got here? So, works in progress. I did not even bother to bring this up. It is my sweater that I had started before. I've made so little progress, you wouldn't, it's like this big. And it's the T-E-G-N-A pattern by, I'm going to put it here. I know who it is, but I'm afraid maybe, um, I'm not, not that I can't pronounce it, I'm afraid maybe it isn't who I think it is, so I'm just going to put it down here for you. And um, <clears throat> it's going great. There, there's nothing wrong with it, but it's almost 400 stitches in the round, and it's lace. So it takes a while to get done with a round, and I never want to start something if I can't get all the way around. And I've been making so many different things, littler projects, things that... The Halloween socks court sort of took over my life because I really just planned to make the one little pair for my grandson. And then I thought, there's all this extra yarn, and could I get three pairs if I did some contrast heels, cuffs, and toes? So... Um, that kind of took over, and I've actually done very little on it. So, um, But it's not something I'd be wearing right now anyway. Maybe I would. I don't know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work on it. I will finish it, but it's just right now it's not. I'm thinking it's not going to be anywhere near my priorities because I've got some other things I want and need to get done. So I And I will be work, working on that hat and then a second hat with the brioche classes and another blinky because my grandson wants it. But I do have to work on Desert Vista Dye Work socks for the month of November because two more months and I'm at another free skinny yarn. So yippee. I think I'm going to do, I have four colors, I think, colorways. But I think I'm going to do this one. This is Murder on the Orient Express, which would not be from the movie, the new movie thing. I actually knit a pair of those with yarn done by somebody else. They were blue and red and black, like navy black and red, a very dark pair. This must be more from the original novel or the original movie or some inspiration she had like for that because it's very different, but I thought it looked more fall-like. So we'll see um, how I go with these. I don't have a contrast color. When you do this Desert Vista Dye Works, the contrast color has to be one of her yarns too, and I don't have one that goes with this, so probably just, you know, straight um, pair of socks. And then just December. And it won't be Christmassy but because I don't have anything of Desert Mr. Dye Works that looks Christmassy. So that is coming up in the future. Let's talk for a second about the baby knit along or make along over in the Ravelry group. We have, when I looked this morning, 109 entries. So great. And if you browse through that, some really, really um, cute sweaters and just so many projects. So thank you all for participating if you participate in that. And I'm sure someone's enjoying what you've knit for them. It's so fun to knit for babies because it goes fast. I have that short attention span. So those things that finish quickly for me are always something I want to do. But anyway, I did random number generator from random.org. And number 63 came up and that is Olia, maybe, O-L-I-Y-A, and she knit the cutest bonnet. It's called Garter Bonnet by Adelita Dutra. And that is the hat I think I had seen when browsing through one day. I had seen a hat, and then when I needed to make that beloved hat, or a hat to go with the little sweater, I wanted to make a little hat to go with the sweater, I'm thinking, where did I see this? And I kept thinking, oh, I saw it while watching the Knit Girls podcast. They they were making lots of bonnets. So I went through all their episodes or the show notes. No, nope, it wasn't any of those, Kev. So I ended up doing Beloved, which I love making that little bonnet anyway. But it wasn't the one I was thinking of this bonnet. I had seen it. So now I have put it in my favorites so that I can remember next time I need to make a baby bonnet. I'm going to do that one. And I'm going to put a picture up here for you of the winner. So O-L-I-Y-A, Olia, if you will send me on Ravelry or if you want to go to um, I, Ravelry, you can send me a private message. I'm in a pickle knitting on Ravelry. If that doesn't work for you. Uh, you could go to my Gmail, which is in a pickle knitting at gmail.com. And I need your first and last name and your mailing address. And I'm going to mail you out a 
surprise. I don't remember what I said it was going to be. If I never said, so whatever I said it was going to be, it's going to be. But if I never said what it's going to be, I'm going to get hold of you and see um, what works for you. Because I have a couple of ideas in mind, but I don't remember what I said. Which, if you've watched this before, is not surprising to you. Let's see. So, and, and we also remember have the um, commercial sock knit along or crochet along. So if you are working on any socks that use a commercial brand yarn, get those done. I'm going to draw at the end of December. So I have a um, prize for that too. And same thing with baby. I don't remember what it is, but we'll get a prize to you for sure. So um, if you want to participate with that, it's over in the Anna Pickle Knitting group on Ravelry. Oh, I know something else I've been working on is some weaving. Last time or time before, I shared the purple linen blend thing that I did was my first project. And then I did, I used that same yarn for the warp. And for the um, weft, I was going back and forth with an Adelaide Cottage fingering weight wool yarn. And I did all I planned to do with that. I'm going to sew that as fabric. It's woven fabric. I'm going to sew it up into a little notions pouch. So we will see how that turns out when I get there. Then I want to warp the loom again, and I'm using this yarn, which is a fingering weight wool yarn. It um, has the naps in it, so I think 85% merino wool and 15% nylon or some kind of naps. This colorway is called that pumpkin drink, and it was dyed by Andy of 10,000 Stitches Podcast. She doesn't dye yarn for sale anymore. I think she still dyes yarn for herself. And she doesn't podcast as frequently like other people you might know. Um, so I don't know if she's, you know, what she's doing now with her dying at all but she moved from Richmond Virginia down to Alabama so a lot of life changes have gone on and you know life takes over so anyway I'm using this and I thought I would use this for the weaving because it might make a nice little mat to sit some of my fall decorations on for instance the little brass dish of acorns with my squirrel that I'm going to knit but don't know what yarn I'm going to use for him and don't know when that's going to happen. So I'm working on that weaving and I'll put a picture here because it's still on the loom and I'm going to use all of this. So I have to rewind the shuttles so that I can um, use up all the yarn. No point in ha I might save a little bit because this is also a yarn that I made some of the acorns out of. Let's see if I can find one. Probably not, because I had a few that had these kinds of colors. But actually, I think it's this one. Not showing that very well. Get it so you can... I don't think that helps too much. But that is this woven up with a size zero needle on an acorn. So I would like to finish that weaving and then I'm going to be taking my loom over to Yarn Cloud where they do lessons, tapping this again to lighten it up hopefully, they do um, lessons and I can do a private lesson where she said she, there's several techniques that she can show me that will help with those edges because I'm still struggling. What I find is I'm fine as long as I sit down and do it, but then when I get up and come back at a later time, then it's like the lines are in a different place. So obviously I'm doing something wrong and I'm just gonna go over there and let her help me out with that. So let me take another look at my book here. I know we've got our book to do, but I wanted to see if I've done everything else. Blah, 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 maybe I'll edit this out here. Well, it seems like maybe I have done all that I had planned to talk about today. So let's do our book. This is Stanley, the Amazing Knitting Cat. And you can see him and his friends on the cover there. And this book is written by Emily McKenzie. It is a story, and I love the, um, the beginning part. This is Tangled Yarn. It's hopefully really just crayon mess because that just gives me anxiety. So Stanley loves to knit. He's very different than other cats because he loves, loves, loves to knit. And he knits things for his friend. Tail cozies and oh, just all sorts of things for all of his friends. But he learns that there is, oh look at what he does for the bunnies. Okay, 
he learns there's going to be a contest and he wants to participate in the contest. It is Wooly Wonders Competition. Bring your um, wackiest wooly creations to the town hall this Saturday. The more bonkers, the better. So he starts knitting and he knits and he knits and he knits and he knits. And his friends don't know what he's knitting, but all of a sudden he runs out of yarn. And he goes to the friends and takes back what he knit for them. And uses that, reuses that yarn, repurposes it into something special that he knits. But I won't tell you too much more of it, but at the end, the friends do end up getting knitted things back, but there's something that comes between. So this is a story for young children, probably mm, pre-K through maybe second or third grade to enjoy. Stanley, the amazing knitting cat. I hope you enjoy it. I got it from Amazon. Well, thanks so much for stopping by today. I appreciate you coming to watch, even though I'm not very regular anymore with podcasting. Life takes its turns here and there. And um, right now, I don't have my grandson five days a week, in, um, all day. I only have him in the afternoons, and we have two of those afternoons that... Um, we have to leave and, and I have to take him to some speech for some articulation issues, um, which are qu quickly being solved. Um, he couldn't say the letter F. He can't make the F sound. So if, if you were saying five fingers, he'd say dive dinger. So that we, he, and he was past the age where he should be doing that. So he is making that initial F sound, but having still struggling with it in the final positions and medial positions. So he, I, I have to do that two days a week. And I find that I just don't have enough time with him. And next year he'll be in kindergarten, as well as uh, my daughter and her soon to be husband are moving not far, not far. It, it'll it'll be, but instead of ten minutes away, it'll be forty five to fifty minutes away, and he'll be in school. So, I'm realizing I'm going to not have all of the quality and quantity of time that we've had since he was born. So, I just feel that right now is a time that if I have the extra time, I'm gonna spend it doing things with him, and so. It's not that I don't want to podcast. I think about it all the time, but I also, in my mind, it's like, okay, well, let me finish this, and then let me finish this, and um, the, this day doesn't work out. So there's uh, life just gets in the way, as as you're probably gleaning, and that I'm a I'm an excuse maker, and I'm really not trying to make excuses, and I don't feel like I need to explain, but I also feel like um, you should know it's not why it's not because I anything's wrong it's not because I couldn't be doing it I'm just making different choices and we'll see next year how my time lends itself and um, what goes on so that's what's been going on I hope that all of you are having a lovely fall or spring in the southern hemisphere time I hope um, everything's treating you well in your crafting and you're enjoying all of your endeavors and I hope that you will come back and see me the next time that I uh, stop by to do a podcast. So bye for now. Mm -hmm.